This is the latest legal information video from Right to Remain. We'd always intended these videos to be like a training session via video because it's exactly the kind of things we say when we are running workshops in the community. And at times like this when face-to-face -face services are shutting down and we're not going to be doing any workshops in the community for some time, then these kind of online learning opportunities become more important than ever. So this video is about evidence. Evidence in asylum, immigration or human rights applications. This is quite a broad topic, but we wanted to look at this because the word evidence can mean different things to different people. And we think it's quite a big ask to understand what evidence is and how they can get it if their life has never been made into a legal case before, because it has a very specific meaning in the context of an asylum immigration or human rights application. As with all these videos, we've got a lot more information about the kinds of things I'll be saying in the Right to Remain toolkit, and particularly in a recent blog post on this very topic, which you can find the link to here. At a basic level, evidence is just information. It's information to prove to the Home Office or to the Courts Tribunal, if you're appealing a Home Office refusal, that you're telling the truth. This might be that you're telling the truth about what has happened to you or your family members or people you know in your country, that you're telling the truth about why you need to be in the UK, that you can't live elsewhere, or just proving that you meet the criteria, the rules of the application you're making. The evidence you need will of course be specific to your application, to your individual situation, but there are general rules and principles about evidence in this context that will need to be met especially around what counts as good, trustworthy evidence. There may be several points at which you need to provide evidence in your application, or maybe there'll just be one. If you're making an immigration application, you might need to provide all the evidence you can when you make that initial application. If you don't get the right to appeal an immigration application, you won't be able to submit further evidence. And even if you have an administrative review of the decision of the Home Office, you can't introduce new evidence at that point for most kinds of immigration applications. So for immigration applications, you're often having to front load all the evidence, put it in at the beginning, because you may not get another chance. With an asylum application, however, there may be several points at which you can provide evidence. We'll go on to that in a moment. And you may not have documentary paper evidence until a bit later on in your asylum claim. A really important principle of our work of the Right to Remain Toolkit is that it's your case, it's your life, and so you should be able to make decisions and take actions and understand what's happening. You need to think about who is responsible for providing evidence for your application. Is it you? Has your lawyer told you that you need to go and get evidence? Or if you don't have a lawyer, you'll definitely need to be getting the evidence yourself. You might need to collect the evidence, but the person providing the evidence might be somebody else. It might be a family member or a community member, particularly if it's about your life in the UK, your family ties, how people support family members in the UK. It might be a professional such as a doctor, a social worker or a teacher, particularly if there is a child involved in the case or somebody with particular needs, behavioural needs, health needs, mental health needs. They might need to provide evidence about why, for example, your life needs to be in the UK or one of your family members needs to be in the UK. In some circumstances, it might be your employer who has to provide evidence. That will be the case if you are needing to provide evidence of your income, of your wages, your salary. It might be your employer providing evidence that shows that you have been resident in the UK for a certain period of time. It might be your lawyer, if you have a lawyer, who is responsible for providing some of the evidence for your application, particularly if it's evidence such as technical legal arguments or case law. So case law are the decisions in other people's cases that might be relevant to your own situation. And it's likely to be a lawyer who will know of those cases or find those cases and then make an illegal argument to say that this means your case should be decided in a certain way. You can watch our separate video on understanding case law and how it may be useful in your case. You can find it on our YouTube channel. Let's look first at asylum cases. At the early stages of an asylum claim, maybe when you haven't been in the UK very long, 
Your evidence is likely to just be your testimony, your story about what's happened to you, what you think may happen if you are returned to your country, and why that means it's not safe for you to be removed from the UK. The Home Office will look at what you said in your first screening interview, and then what you said in your later, longer, substantive interview, or at least the records of what they think you said, because if there's a problem with interpretation or the writing down of the information, it may not actually be what you've said, and there's a lot more information on this in the asylum parts of the toolkit. The Home Office will then look at what you've said and compare it with their own documents that present what the Home Office position is on your country or for people in your situation in your country. Some people just don't have documentary evidence. They don't have a paper trail because if you're fleeing your country very quickly, you just may not have chance to pick up documents that could be useful for your case because you're just trying to be safe or there just might not exist a paper trail for what you're trying to explain has happened to you or could happen to you. However, later on in your asylum claim, it is going to be really important to try and have documentary evidence, to have particularly objective evidence, which is evidence that isn't based on what you say happened. Because if the starting point of the Home Office is to disbelieve the person who is seeking asylum, and unfortunately that is the general starting point, then you're going to need evidence from some other source, from a credible, reliable source, that says actually the situation is how you describe that what you say could happen to you is likely to happen to you. When we're talking about documentary evidence, we might be thinking about political party membership cards or witness statements that show that you're a member of a political party. It might be things like arrest warrants, court documents for you or family members or people you're associated with. It could be a birth certificate, a death certificate for family members. It could be records that show that you were admitted to hospital. It could be newspaper articles about you or the situation in your country to show that it is how you describe. There's lots of other kinds of evidence, we can't list all of them here, but that's the kind of thing that we mean by evidence. In an asylum claim, you might be submitting evidence as early as your substantive interview. Obviously make sure that you've let your lawyer know and they've had a look at the evidence before you do that. You're very likely to need to submit evidence at the appeal stage of an asylum claim if the Home Office have refused your initial application. And if you are refused at the appeal stage and are looking to make a fresh claim, then you'll definitely need evidence. We've got more information about all these stages of the asylum process and how you might be able to find evidence and where are good online sources for evidence in the Right to Remain toolkit. Let's have a look at some other kinds of applications. If you're applying to stay in the UK, to come to the UK as the spouse, civil partner or unmarried partner of a British citizen or someone with indefinite leave to remain in the UK, then you're very likely to have to meet the minimum income requirement, which at the moment is £18,600 per year. That's without including any children in the application. This is quite a specific amount you need to be able to meet and you need to be able to prove that you meet it in specific ways. And you'll find links to more information on this on the blog post on evidence on our website. In any application based on a relationship, you're going to need to prove that that relationship exists, that it's a real relationship. We've got lots more information about the kind of evidence you might need if you're applying on the basis of a relationship and the right to remain toolkit. So for example in the section on family members, we've got an action section about the evidence you might need to prove that you're in a relationship with a partner. If you live together, you would be providing evidence of living together. So that might be documents about your mortgage, if you own the place where you live, or a joint tenancy agreement or letter from your landlord confirming you both pay the rent. Maybe joint utility bills. Do you have a joint bank account? Provide evidence of that. By utility bills, we mean bills for things like electricity, gas or water provided to your home. If you're making an application to stay in the UK on the basis of being a parent of a child in the UK, there's some legal principles you need to demonstrate that you meet. So once again, you'd need to prove that you're in a relationship with the child and explain what kind of relationship that is. Are they your biological child, stepchild, adopted child? Are you a parent or you're a guardian or you're a carer? The exact wording of the rules you need to meet will depend on what part of the immigration rules you are applying under which will depend on your situation and your child's situation. But to speak quite broadly, 
it's always going to be useful to be able to prove that you have a genuine and subsisting relationship with your child so that it's ongoing, it's not just a past relationship with no current relationship, that you have an active role in your child's upbringing and that you plan to continue to do so in the future. And you may need to prove that you have sole parental responsibility. If you're having to prove that you've got an active role in your child's upbringing, the Home Office suggests that you might want to provide evidence of things like letters from your child's school confirming you attend events like parents' evening, maybe letters from the dentist, from the doctor, confirming that you take them to those appointments, and maybe other parents confirming how much contact you have with your child. Whenever you're providing letters or statements from people, you'll also need to provide proof of identity for the person who's written the letter or the statement. We've got lots more information about this on the If You Have Children section of the Right to Remain Toolkit, so we recommend that you have a look at that. The Home Office website, which we have links to from our blog post on evidence, does have some quite useful information about the kind of information and evidence you may need when making an application based on a family member. You should remember that it's not always the case that the information on the Home Office website is exactly correct for your kind of application. There have been examples when either you've been told you need to provide something you don't or you haven't been told you need to provide something and that might give a misleading sense of what you need to do to make a correct application. But again, broadly speaking, this is quite a useful framework for thinking about the kind of evidence you might need to provide. And it's particularly useful for suggesting the types of evidence that the Home Office think is good evidence that they will consider to be trustworthy. For a few different kinds of applications, you might need to prove how long you've been in the UK. That might be, for example, if you're applying for EU settled status and for some reason the automatic checks of tax and benefit records haven't shown up for you, haven't shown the correct information. Or it may be if you're applying for leave to remain in the UK based on other kinds of long residence in the UK. This is another area in which what the Home Office suggests is good evidence is quite a useful guideline for collecting evidence through application. We've got information about this on our blog post and the evidence is about settled status applications, EU settled status, but actually it's a quite useful framework in general for again giving a sense of what the Home Office thinks is strong evidence. They include things like bank statements, employer letters, council tax bills, and they also give examples of the kind of evidence they would consider for periods of time that are shorter and might not be captured in those longer periods, such as a financial year's worth of work. And they give examples, again, of bank statements, pay slips, utility bills, mobile phone bills, or even travel tickets, confirming when you entered the UK or a passport stamp to do the same. What this shows is that there is a hierarchy of evidence, and this is true for evidence about your personal situation, it's true about objective evidence. The Home Office and the courts will consider some evidence to be more trustworthy than others. Newspapers that are seen to be more authoritative than others. Obviously, it is really important to think about who has produced the evidence, where has your evidence come from. In an asylum claim, if you're trying to put in evidence that shows you are in danger from the government in your country, and the evidence you're providing is all from an opposition group's newspaper, that's not very likely to be taken seriously because they're not seen as being objective. The Home Office say that evidence should be from an official or impartial source. So they say they won't consider for certain applications, things like photos and videos, birthday cards. A judge, if they're considering your case on appeal, may see things differently. And if you haven't got the formal and official impartial source evidence, then you might have to make do with these other kinds of evidence. But obviously, if you can get official evidence, more formal evidence, that's always going to be better. And just a final note of warning, the Home Office is often really suspicious of documentation from outside the UK. If somebody else is getting evidence for you and posting it to you, sending it to you, it's really important that you know where that evidence came from and that you know that it's genuine. You need to keep proof of receiving the evidence and how it was sent to you. It can be really difficult if you're desperate for documentary evidence 
because the Home Office just aren't believing what you say, but it can be so harmful and counterproductive to put in evidence that the Home Office then say is false and this can damage your whole claim.